Oh yeah. Check that out. That was that was very strange actually. I my headphones died as as I took them off. So good timing. All right, we've passed part four of the Google Cloud ML data engineering certification. This one, the part we went through was all about how do you deploy a machine learning model, right? How do you get it into production? That that is what I'm I'm focusing on at the moment is is not not so much that I want to do it now actually working on it we're doing it at Max Kelson. Long story short, if you build a great machine learning model but it lives in a Jupyter notebook, it's not necessarily helping anyone. What I personally want to do and what what probably a lot of you guys want to do as well, I hope you should want to do this is Get your code out there into the world and into into production. What do I mean by into production? That that could be anything, right? But it means it means to to get someone using it. So like I don't have my iPhone on me because that's in my drawer because I've been studying. So when you use your iPhone and you use an app or something, chances are Facebook, Instagram, you know the common ones, they all use machine learning, but how cool would it be to have one of your own out there that that use machine learning to 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 do something incredible. Like for me, uh, I've got a, an idea of, of using machine learning to, to help people learn about nutrition by taking photos of foods. So I wanna, me and my brother have worked on something similar, so that'll be a future project. But we've got a certificate on the way. By the time this video goes up, it'll probably be here. So high five for, for the certificate. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, get it back up. There we go. How shiny does that look? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take a break and then we're going to get into part five. Let's do it. There we go. What's up, brother? What's happening? Not much. I'm what game is this? It's uh, like a knockoff version of Smash, but for Xbox. You know how much I love movement. Been breaking up study recently with with skipping. I find if I do like a Pomodoro or something, so like 25 minutes of study and come out outdoors, usually it's a bit sunny out, but it's it's late in the afternoon now. It's I don't have a watch on. It's like 4, 30, 5 p.m. or something. 100 skips, and then that, I find, gets everything flowing, gets the brain going, because you sit down for too long, you can get a bit stagnant. So you move around, get the body jumping, and then back into it. Now I wonder if I can get 100 straight. I probably just jinx myself. Got a bit fast at the end. I think that's 120. All right, heart rate's up. We'll go back in. We'll get into part five. Do a couple of pomodoros. I got a few left for today. I think we'll do eight, eight or ten. We'll see how today goes. You see, the thing about machine learning models, as you probably know, they love data. So the Titanic problem that we did had about a thousand rows. Now, what if your data set has close to a billion rows? So a million times more. Well, that with the pandas, with pandas, right? That's what we use for the, the Titanic one, or that's what, what gets commonly used with smaller data sets. The data frame or the table you work with um, stores in memory, so right, the, the RAM of your, of your computer. Now, storing a billion rows in RAM might not be the best option. So, what can you do? That's when you need distributed systems, that's when you need cloud platforms, that's when you need giant machines. And I'm still, still puffed from those skips. If you haven't got a skipping rope, get a skipping rope. And that, that, that point there, the more data thing was, it was a simple one, right? But that's what I like about, about this course is it, it broke it into, uh, there was three steps to improve machine learning. I've got my little notepad here. And so number one was more data. That's what the example I just had. What if you had a billion rows of data, not just a thousand like our Titanic little baby sample. Number two is feature engineering. So we didn't do any feature engineering in the Titanic example, but what is feature engineering? I think the camera is slightly moving, that's all right, I'll just hold it. Feature engineering, how could you combine two features into one? And what do I mean by a feature? Imagine a, a column, a column is a feature. So imagine Titanic, it's an easy example. So you have a column for age, cabin, class. What if you combined um, age and class? So you had people who are 
uh, let's say over or under 50, right? This is a rudimentary example. Over or under 50 and in first class or second class. So you've combined the age column with the class column. Now that's just one, one example, but that's another way to improve your machine learning models is if, if the features you get don't sort of give you the best results, you can create your own. And then the final one is hyperparameter tuning. So more data, feature engineering, and then hyperparameter tuning. So if you do build a model and you want to um, test a whole bunch of different, different settings on that model, if you imagine, if you imagine you've got a, a different combination of let's say learning rate, let's say optimization rate, let's say uh, the number of, of batch size that you use, what if you wanted to test a whole bunch of different combinations, right? And that is where Cloud Auto ML comes in, or you can do like Hyperopt, which is a library for hyperparameter tuning. I mentioned that in the Titanic video. Um, or Grid Search, that searches a whole bunch of different parameters. And now that's enough talking. That's three ways to, to, to blow out your machine learning, well, to improve your machine learning models, not blow them out. That's what we want to do, improve. Skipping. Oh yeah, I think it started to rain. We better make these quick. Skipping in the rain. I think there's a song about that. Skipping and singing in the rain. You keeping count? Mess myself up. And again. Whew. All right, one more Pomodoro. You notice how, notice how I stuffed up and I lost concentration. Similar to when you study, focus on the one thing. That's why I set the timer and don't do anything else except just got really dark. Really dark. Back into the light. And don't do anything except focus on that. So we're gonna finish off this, part five, and then I think that'll be it for today. I forgot to turn the microphone on. So there's no audio, um, but we're gonna just essentially sum that up in a lot quicker and better fashion. And course, course five I've been doing on, on the Google Cloud Platform Data Engineering Certification, a mouthful, has been on streaming data. Now you have your regular data, which may be, say it's a data just in a box, it doesn't really change, it stays in that box. Streaming data is like stuff going through a river. So imagine YouTube or Spotify or, or whatever or something or Google, they always have data flowing through. It's not, just a, it's not just a box full of data. It's always getting updated like a river, right? It's like you say you put your, your hand in the river, you put it in again, it's never the same river. I'm pretty sure that's a saying somewhere. Anyway, what's important to know this? Well, it's as data grows and grows and grows and sensors become more prevalent, it's a problem that, that has to be taken, taken on, right? You're not always going to have just a, a, a box of data to work on to build great models off. You're going to have constant input of data. Now, all this stuff I've been, I've been learning on here, like all different services like Dataflow and, and PubSub and Google BigQuery and Bigtable, they're all new to me, right? So I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of like... Um, Still like, what do I do here? So if someone was to ask me, could I build an end-to-end -end pipeline with it? Not yet, but I'd probably know where to look. I'd know where to find out. And that, that segues into a little question I got. I'll answer, I'll answer this to, to wrap up the video. I think that's enough studying for today. Someone asked, reach out to me, 
when do things, when do you start to understand things? And he's been coding Python for a couple of months, uh, but struggling a bit with, with some of the concepts. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll come straight with that. I'm, I'm in the same boat, right? I've been coding for 18 months, two years, or let's just say 18 months, whatever. The time frame doesn't really matter because I've spoken to people who have coded for 10 years and still look up basic things. You'll find blog posts of people who are experts in their in their field, one of the, some of the highest quality developers, and they say they'll say, or the honest ones, the honest ones will say they look stuff up every day. They're on Stack Overflow trying to piece together things, and that's. That's what I do too. That's where I'm at with this Google Cloud Platform services because it's still all new. I mean, there's so much out there, right? There's always a new framework, a new way of doing things. What I think is important is to get some foundation skills and never lose that curiosity or that eagerness to try and figure something out, right? Yeah, that's that's the most important part because when you first start out, it's going to be frustrating. I, I go through it. I go through it every day. You'll have failures. The other day I failed at committing some GitHub code and or well, some code to GitHub and lost 500 lines of Python code. And it's gone. Um, so yeah, sorry, Michael. Uh, that was my colleague we were working on that with. So we all have failures. We all have struggles, but we learn and we figure out how to how to look for the right questions, not necessarily the right answer. Look for the right questions of, of where to go next. So if you're struggling with, with coding or with data science or any of these concepts, trust me, I'm in the same boat. That's why that's why I'm, I'm, I'm here studying every day. I'm studying along with you. Trying try best, the best we can to learn. But I'm gonna go do a workout in the backyard and have some dinner and then we'll get back into this tomorrow. Keep learning team. See you soon. See ya. I tried to say see you next time and see you soon at the same time. Keep moving. See you next week.